Greetings to all. This is Vicki Bester, Executive Director of NCC from 1999 to 2017. My goal is to try to put NCC's history into the context of the field of Japanese studies from before NCC was founded in 1991 to the present. The field of Japanese studies in the U.S. is essentially a post-war entity fueled by the GI Bill, which educated soldiers after the war. Many of the early leaders of Japanese studies came from one of two groups, the children of Christian missionaries who grew up in Japan and those who learned Japanese as part of the war effort, many of whom first went to Japan during the occupation period. Major funding flowed to U.S. universities during the early Cold War when the study of Japanese and other strategic languages were seen as vital to the U.S.'s foreign defense. By 1950, there were six U.S. institutions with significant Japanese studies programs, and the field grew steadily thereafter as the Japanese economy recovered from the war. In 1973, the Japanese government made $1 million grants to 10 U.S. institutions to support Japanese studies. The so-called Tanaka Ten grants were a major game-changer in the field, and all of the 10 recipients, UC Berkeley, Chicago, Columbia, Harvard, University of Hawaii, Manoa, Michigan, Princeton, Stanford, University of Washington, and Yale, have traditionally been among the greatest trainers of PhDs who have since gone on to anchor the over 200 degree granting programs in Japanese studies at U.S. institutions. FYI, here is a scan of the form letter that was sent to each of the 10 institutions announcing their Tanaka 10 grants. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, Japanese studies grew enormously, supported by Japan's export-led economy, which moved abroad, becoming known to many as Japan Inc. At the peak of Japanese corporate expansion, there were more than 300,000 Japanese expats living in the New York metropolitan area, and Mitsubishi Corporation even purchased Rockefeller Center, pictured here. At the same time, trade tensions escalated among the manufacturing sectors on both sides of the Pacific. This is that iconic image of American auto workers bashing a Toyota in a strip mall in Indiana. Japanese corporate philanthropy also grew enormously and became a major funder of Japanese studies, both at the K-12 and college levels. While the field of Japanese studies was growing enormously, the expansion and funding of Japanese libraries could not keep pace. Leading scholars of Japanese studies, who were increasingly sending their graduate students to teach in public and private institutions in all regions of the country, and the funders to the field, like the Japan-U.S. Friendship Commission and Japan Foundation, could see that exponentially fun funding of library collections was neither feasible nor wise. A means of coordinating library and information needs across the field was needed. Marius Jansen of Princeton University, pictured here, was then the chairman of the Japan Foundation American Advisory Committee. Carol Gluck of Columbia University, then chair of Japan Foundation's Institutional Support Subcommittee, was among the most vocal advocates for the creation of an intermediary organization, which became the NCC. After numerous studies and conferences in late 1991, a conference was held at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University, where the founding of NCC was announced. With Amy Heinrich, then the director of the CV Star East Asian Library at Columbia, 
as NCC's first chair. NCC held its first meeting in March of 1992. At the same time NCC was taking off, Japan's economic bubble was imploding. The next year, 1993, Japan's Liberal Democratic Party lost its hold on the Japanese diet for the first time. Two years later, in 1995, the Hanshin Awaji earthquake hit the Kobe area in January. In March, the sarin gas attacks in the Tokyo subway took place. And yet again in 1995, the United States experienced its first domestic terrorist act when the federal building in Oklahoma City was bombed. Coincidentally, 1995 was also a high point in the growth of Japanese studies in the US. However, as Patricia Steinhoff's chart shows, the field has remained strong since then and has nearly recovered to its 1995 levels two decades later. Over the period, NCC increasingly became a major intermediary in the field. Much has changed, especially the focus of emerging areas of scholarship and in the nature of resources used. Initially, NCC focused largely on print resources and cooperative efforts to develop and share collections without redundancy. By 1995, NCC was already working with Cocon's Information Access Working Group in developing ILL strategies, and digital resources have increasingly taken off over the period. Please check out the image timeline further highlighting NCC's activities in the last 25 years. Topically as well, interest in Japan has changed from more traditional fields to business and the economy during the bubble years and increasingly to popular culture and what is now known as Cool Japan, that country's greatest soft power tool. As Patricia Steinhoff's graphic demonstrates, Japanese studies remain strong with more and more emphasis on digital resources and the franchises that now dominate Cool Japan. Please let me conclude by saying that NCC responds to the demands from the field and succeeds because so many librarians and faculty volunteer to make its projects grow. In the present climate of shrinking government and foundation support, we need all of you to get involved. And we very much need to thank those who have funded NCC's projects over the years. Please. Give them your thanks.